Greetings, this is Jerry Rivera with the Avaya Technology Strategy and Development Team, TSD. This video will detail setting up and configuring agent tests in the SLA MON server of ADS 2.0. A short discussion is also provided on how the agent's test algorithm is designed for the full mesh configuration. This video will demonstrate setting up test patterns that run between SLA monitor agents in the Avaya Diagnostic Server 2.0. Call patterns are used to define tests that are performed at the direction of the SLA MON server. Those tests can be run in an automatic or manual mode depending on the day-to-day -day monitoring or if a specific troubleshooting procedure needs to be performed. The system is delivered with a test pattern known as default. This pattern is set up to run as an automatic pattern and can be started to provide monitoring at initial install. However, the amount of test traffic generated might not be needed in your environment. The focus of this video will be on creating custom patterns and understanding how the calculation is done to determine the number of test patterns in a full mesh configuration. The next two graphics will break down the enterprise network to be programmed and the full mesh calculation. I will then demonstrate the provisioning in the SLA MON server. This slide shows our enterprise network. It shows a total of nine subnets within nine different locations. There are three zones established called Americas, Northern Europe for the Northern European zone, and then the Europe zone. This is not a typical configuration and is for illustration only. Please note that the Northern European zone is abbreviated N.Europe zone. The colored arcs from the India location are shown to illustrate that there is a connection from each subnet to each other independent subnet and one connection to each zone. Each zone or independent subnet have similar number of connections to and from it. Within each zone, a colored arc indicates that there's intra-zone communication between the subnets in that zone. The lower half of the text defines the steps to calculate the number of connections in a full mesh based on the diagram shown with three zones configured. Before I talk to that, the formula of n times n minus 1, where n equals the number of objects, is important to understand. For a moment, imagine an enterprise network with nine subnets with no zones. Applying that formula, that would be 9 times 9 minus 1 or 8, which equals 72. Each connection has a bi-directional media stream, so that 72 would have to be divided by 2 to come up with a total of 36 connections in a full mesh with no zones. With that bit of understanding, let's look at how adding in zone modifies that calculation. The first step is to count the total number of zones and the independent subnets, which in this case is a total of 6. Applying the formula, we have 6 times 5 equaling 30. The next step is to look inside each zone and count the number of subnets and again apply the formula within that specific zone. In our case, all the zones have two subnets. The formula would be 2 times 1 or 2. With the math being the same for all three zones, that would be a total of 6 to be added to the previous calculation, which would bring us to a total of 36. Now dividing that calculation again by 2 gives us 18 connections. The chart in the upper left corner shows the configured connections. The chart was exported using the tool in SLA MON to export that data. This slide illustrates a testing configuration where the MPLS cloud is being monitored. We will configure several of the links in this arrangement when we access the SLA MON server. A configuration like this one might be used to identify what the service provider is doing with respect to DSCP markings, delay, loss, and jitter across the network cloud. I have now switched over to the SLA monitor application. The first screen shown upon login is the discovery screen and you can see several subnets that have been previously discovered listed. Moving over to the agent screen, you can see the agents that have been discovered previously. Going to the admin tab and to the zone management selection, I have highlighted the three zones I mentioned in the slides. 
the America Zone, the Europe Zone, and the Northern Europe Zone. We will now move over to the Test Administration Test Pattern Choice, which is the focus of this video. The first thing that needs to be done is to define a test pattern name. I am calling this one All Patterns and pressing the Add New button to add it to the database. You can see it entered in the lower table with the other test patterns that were previously configured. You can see in the right pane that the All Patterns is shown in the Name window. There are a number of options that can be selected. I am changing the codec to G.711 from the default of G.729 and increasing the number of max tests per subnets. Note the highlighted test generation algorithm drop-down is set to the choice of all subnet combinations. Pressing the generate button will produce all the possible subnet combinations based upon the zones and individual subnets configured. This should match the number we configured by looking at the network map, which it does. I will now be moving over to the admin tab and zone management once again. Some tests interact with certain functions. When there are zones created, only one connection is allowed to a zone. I will need to remove all the subnets configured as part of a zone in the previous section. I am doing this by clicking the red X to the right of the IP address of the subnet. Please note, the zone names still exist, but the zero in the parentheses indicate that there are no subnets associated with these zone names. Going back over to the test administration, test pattern choice, I will select the test pattern that I partially configured for this part of the provisioning, called P-P tests. Note that there are five of the eight point-to-point -point test pairs configured. The three that are missing are the ones for the subnet that was not part of the connection into the zone when the zones were originally configured. Now that all the subnets have been removed out of the three zones, I can add them here as point-to-point -point links to meet the configuration we saw earlier in the slide. There are a couple of ways that this can be done. One is to directly type the IP address of the subnet or the other, which I'm doing now, is to click the search icon above the entry field, and in this case, I am selecting the India subnet. After clicking the Continue button, you can see that it is now populated in the input field. Selecting the other search button, I will select U.S. California. Clicking the Continue button, the input field is filled in, and I am pushing the Add Test button to add it to the lower table. After performing that operation twice more, we have the three missing subnet combinations in place. It is important to close out this operation by pushing the Save Changes button. If you leave this screen without saving the changes, you will reload whatever was previously stored in the database. The last thing to do would be to start the test. This is done under the Test Administration tab and Test Execution. Selecting the current test pattern drop-down, you can see the all patterns and the point-to-point -point tests are available for the selection to be started. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.